Yesterday, I had the pleasure of being on the desk for the America's Shard broadcast of the seasonal tournament. And on that broadcast, we revealed Pike in all his glory. Now, that's why you did not get a reveal slash reaction video on Pike from me yesterday because I was on the broadcast. I couldn't film it. But we're going to go over him and all of the other cards that were revealed yesterday. But first, some quick housekeeping stuff. Yes, I'm aware you can't see my face right now. My cat decided to mess with my lighting and I haven't had a chance to fix it, but I wanted to get my recording done first because I have no idea how long that is going to take as well as some other stuff I have to do today. So no camera today. I'm also aware that other cards have already been revealed today. That video will be up shortly after this one. Again, no camera for that, but you're going to get all of the card reveals so that we're caught up. But I wanted to make sure I still covered Pike, both because I didn't get to talk about all of the cards in detail on the broadcast yesterday, but also because not everybody may have watched the seasonal tournament to begin with. So without further ado, Pike. Pike is a four cost two, three Bilgewater champion with the lurker tag with the lurk keyword and has quick attack. Now, the most interesting part for Pike is that his text says, when I lurk, transform me into death from below. And we're going to revisit that in just a moment. But lastly, the level one version of Pike says allied Pikes have dealt 15 or more damage as the level up condition. So right out of the gate, the level up condition should tell you that Pike is a champion that you may be playing uh, multiples of or see multiple instances of or something is up there. And a lot of that has to do with death from below. So as a reminder, Pike's text here says when I lurk, transform me into death from below and the lurk keyword matters when this card is on top of your deck so this is not something that applies when you're attacking and the lurk trigger happens pike doesn't like magically transform then this is when pike is the top card of your deck and you attack and he would be your lurk trigger so if he's the top card of your deck and you attack he changes into death from below so what is death from below Death from Below is a four cost Bilgewater spell. It's fast speed. It still has the lurk keyword. And it says summon Pike striking an enemy. This is really cool. This is removal, but it's scaling removal because Pike is a lurker. He's going to get bigger every time you're triggering lurk. And so that means this spell gets more and more powerful the longer the game goes. This is also a great way for you to speed up leveling up pike because if you're using death from below and let's say pike is a 5-3 you've triggered lurk three times you use death from below he strikes a unit now your pike has done five damage then if it's your attack round you turn around and you attack and you know he gets chump blocked but that's still five more damage you are two-thirds of the way to leveling up your pike so this is pretty neat now you might be thinking okay well He's just going to always be death from below, right? Because he'll be on the top of the deck. But you have to remember lurk triggers when you attack. And so if it's an off round, for example, where you do not have the attack token and he's on top of your deck, he doesn't get to trigger that lurk unless you've done something like play a free attack. So there are chances, there are opportunities for you to draw Pike and have him just be Pike. And that's fine. He's still a scaling quick attack unit, but... The good news is there are ways that you can jam Pike back on top of your deck to re-get that death from below. One of those ways is Bone Skewer, which just so happens to be Pike's champion spell as well. So this is pretty neat because we'd already seen Bone Skewer, but now it's also his champion spell. And it's also a great way to utilize Pike, not only because it again helps with his level up condition, but also re-transforms him potentially into death from below it depends on the timing if you use a bone skewer before you attack then pike goes to the top of your deck and then you attack he's obviously there he triggers lurk he becomes death from below and so you can really chain together some cool strikes and removal with pike i love this synergy and this is the big payoff because i haven't even talked about level two pike yet so here's here's what you need to know about level two pike level two pike is still a four cost gets the standard plus one plus one bump so he becomes a three four still a lurker with lurk still has quick attack 
still transforms into death from below when he lurks but gets this new text when i kill an enemy i strike the weakest enemy holy cow this can lead to one-sided board wipes it is as busted as it sounds so if you use death from below to kill a unit then that first unit dies so you've killed an enemy and then he strikes the weakest enemy and if the weakest enemy dies well he's now killed an enemy so he strikes the weakest enemy and he'll just chain over and over and over nuking units and this is so satisfying i cannot wait to do this i cannot wait to abuse this this is a great finisher but not in a traditional sense normally you think of a finisher in runeterra as either something that provides a lot of burst thinking like atrocity something that represents a lot of damage but also has burst like captain farron where you get the big 8-8 eight eight, and then you also have two decimates things like that nasus with his big body and fearsome so on and so forth those are what you normally think of as a finisher uh, great beyond is another great example big body with evasion in the form of elusive but pike pike has a lot of attack by the time that you are playing him as a true finisher because of the lurk keyword but it's a finisher because you can set up these one-sided board wipes and then go into your attack so when you get to the stage in the game where you know you're back and forth with your opponent and you haven't attacked yet but maybe you have the token you're stalling they're stalling you both spend some mana and you've got like one mana left because you've been playing units to set up your board they've got only a couple mana left but you've banked some spell mana right so maybe you have like one mana but you've got full spell mana suddenly death from below comes out and pike does his thing the entire enemy board is gone and now you've got the units you just developed plus pike that is a huge chunk of damage coming their way because all your units in this lurk archetype are going to be scaling so pike is a finisher in that he'll create very opportune windows for you to push damage and i love that it's such a cool concept kind of a unique way to create and design a quote-unquote finisher for an archetype because you know like let's be honest in the past they're all kind of the same they're either burst damage or they are a big source of damage that is hard to stop whether that's elusive or overwhelm like ruin runner is considered a finisher for some decks um you think about like the overwhelm archetype it's just big overwhelm units with battle fury stuff like that so this being a more explosive style finisher i just absolutely adore and i i love everything about this pike was the perfect capstone if you will to this lurk archetype but pike was not the only thing revealed yesterday so we are going to also talk about the other cards through the various broadcasts that were revealed starting with jalfish this is an eight cost bilge water lurker with the lurk tag has a two seven body to start but on play it says each lurker ally strikes a random enemy now this is a skill so here on the graphic you can see the skill it means it goes on the stack it can be interacted with so it can be denied right in negation that sort of thing but this is a really powerful effect it is in many ways the follower version of pike so pike is a one-man show when he starts his death from below but jawfish here is more of a okay you've developed a board you've got a you know a number of units your opponent has a number of units and you play jawfish and you get a bunch of one-sided strikes i i like it as a, a bunker buster kind of a stalemate buster i i don't know if it's gonna end up seeing play in the archetype because i think the real appeal for the lurker archetype is ultimately playing a bunch of under costed but overstatted units i've talked about that in the past where i think the archetype shines when you have been developing on curve and then in the mid game you start playing under costed units with lots of stats i think that's really where you're going to generate the most pressure and that will also help you create those windows of opportunity for pike to be your finisher so i don't think this will 
make the cut but i like that it exists i could see it make the cut maybe as a one of because it is really strong this could end up being this could end up being almost like the bright steel formation of the lurker archetype in that it comes down once for like an explosive turn and maybe closes it out it's also kind of interesting because it helps with pike because it's each lurker ally not just the followers and so if you already have pike on the board and even if your allies don't line up their random strikes well enough as long as the pike kills something he's also going to chain and keep striking the weakest enemy as well and while it's not super relevant with the existing lurkers as is it also does start to matter where if any of them have somehow picked up a new keyword right like if you've got lurkers with life steal because it's the lurker allies striking enemies you get all of those benefits etc etc so I do like the card I think that its cost makes it a bit prohibitive but I could see it maybe as a one of bunker buster bright steel formation type play for the lurker archetype I think it's going to take some testing next up we have swift wing flight this is a four cost demacian follower with the elite tag has a three two body in the challenger keyword on play you get to choose to create either a fleet feather tracker a blinding assault or a silver wing vanguard in hand then on attack this uh, this flight excuse me <laughs> well, that was almost a freudian slip this flight gives other challenging allies plus one plus one this round so i like this card and i think it's gonna take some testing i don't think this is going to be like an auto three of inclusion in certain decks but i think that it has a lot of potential to shine because of how versatile it is so your play ability lets you choose between fleet feather tracker blinding assault or silver wing vanguard which if you don't remember that's the four cost that makes two two one challenging units but all of them have challenger or can get challenger and so this will essentially buff the other cards it creates on attack but for me the big deal here is it's got a relevant tag with elite it's got a relevant keyword with challenger it replaces itself with a card might not be best card quality but it's still giving you some value if it dies immediately and has the potential to buff other units that you are likely running in the deck that wants to run this so playing this on round four if you've played a protege on round three for example is pretty good because that's going to jump up to a three five and you're still going to have this challenging as well i think that this card could shine in a challenger heavy shen deck or something like that or a challenger heavy ash deck with frostbite effects i think that again it, it's gonna take some testing but i like the versatility i think the biggest problem i have with it is actually that it costs four because i want to play this card in a shen deck really bad but i want to play this card and the same round that i want to play shen like they're competing but ultimately i think that there's enough interesting challenger units in demacia to make this at least worth testing and like i said before i don't think this is going to end up being a three of even in the lists that want to run it because it's a bit understated even though it does replace itself it's a bit understated and we've kind of already seen that stats are king in demacia there's a reason that say screeching dragon sees so much more play than the 5-4 counterpart that also gives you a unit when it dies and it's because that one health matters and the scaling from fury matters so in that regard uh, this card does have some drawbacks but it's got enough going on like i said relevant tag with elite relevant keyword with challenger gives you a card when it comes into play and gives buffs when it attacks like that's a lot of stuff happening on one card so i would be i think very surprised if it wasn't at least good enough to crack one deck but again it requires testing i don't know i might just have blinders on usually back in like the mtg days 
if a card had a lot of text it probably meant it was really powerful it's not always the case but like historically cards in that game back in the you know early days of the game if it looked really confusing it's probably because it did something totally busted so uh, this one it's just doing a lot and i think that at some point that value will shine last up we have sacred protector this is a seven cost ionian follower has an eight six body and it says allies with barrier have double attack and on play draw shen so this is you know affectionately called the shen boat though the art is not really a boat it's more like shen is driving a megazord made of a tree that's also on fire and he's making a grand entrance i i don't know he looks like he's a professional wrestler walking into wrestlemania and this is like his big fireworks display like the art is awesome but all of that for a card that i think will ultimately be subpar i think that there is a lot of flashy play potential a lot of blowout potential you take this card and you pair it with something like bright steel for example and it sounds busted because all your allies now also have double attack etc etc but it's allies with barrier and i think that is the problem altogether because any sort of damage source any ping anything that gets rid of the barrier stops the double attack so first you have to give an ally barrier and barrier is temporary now obviously shen helps with continuing to apply barrier this is meant to help shen out but outside of that you have to have consistent ways to keep giving your units barrier and then you have to find a way to make sure they keep the barrier and have them be unblocked to take advantage of the double attack now i will say this i think the maybe the underrated aspect of this card i think people focus on the double attack but i think the real strength of this card is that it encourages your opponents to block your units with barrier because they don't want to take the damage from the double attack and if they're blocking your units with barrier you're probably creating great value opportunities normally you give a unit barrier and you attack and unless it's an insane amount of damage or whatever your opponent just avoids blocking it because they don't want to give you free value but this says okay well if you're gonna do that you're gonna take a ton of damage so in that regard i think that this card might be better than it looks i don't know that it's still good enough to see play but i think it might be better than it looks because it is encouraging your opponent to sacrifice cards to deal with it it does still draw a shen but at the end of the day it's also it's a seven cost eight six uh i i think that it's potentially in a better spot than leviathan though just because if this gets silenced an eight six for seven is a whole lot better than a five eight for eight one of the big issues with leviathan is that you play it and Targon silences it and then you cry at least with this you get a reasonable body for one mana cheaper so i don't know i will likely test this in some sort of shen deck as i'm sure other people will and i suspect it's better than we are giving it credit for because it does force your opponent into play patterns that they traditionally would not like but any sort of like expensive card right sevens eights nines that don't give you some sort of immediate value usually feel really bad in this game and i think that's why so many people myself included are hesitant to actually call it good so without testing really hard to gauge the true power level here but i'm gonna err on the side of um not necessarily amazing but not bad <laughs> I know we're, we're uh, really technical though with our reviews here, but that's it as far as the cards go. Uh, these were again the ones revealed yesterday. Reminder, a uh, video later today with the ones revealed today. And if you made it this far through all of my rambling. I appreciate you as always. If you watched the seasonal broadcast yesterday, then 
thank you i had an absolute blast doing it all the love and support that i got during and after the event was incredible um in many ways uh kind of a, a shock but i love you all so until next time may you walk on warm sands